Well, praise God. We have been doing a series on prayer. How many people have been, ex been uh, receiving something out of, these, out of this series? Amen? Amen. And so we've been uh, studying actually on even some prayers that we can pray. And uh, it's been really good. And if you have your Bibles, let's open our Bibles to Matthew chapter 6. And let's look at um, verse 9 here. Chapter 6, verse 9. And uh, what we're using is the Lord's Prayer. How many people ever prayed the Lord's Prayer? Amen. And, you know, they've made, they, you can even sing the Lord's Prayer. They, they do that in weddings. And um, it's a beautiful prayer. But, uh, you know, I believe the Lord's Prayer, it can, you know, you can pray it verbatim. But I believe it's more of a pattern for praying. And we want to really, you know, if you want to be effective in the kingdom of God, you need to really learn how to connect with God through prayer. Amen. Amen. I, I say this praying brings heaven down here on earth. Amen. And that's what we want to do. We want to bring God's presence. We want to bring God's power. We want to bring God down here on our scene. Uh, you know, in the Old Testament, it said that that God looked for somebody to stand in the gap to pray and he could not find a person. And it's seen, you know, John Wesley said it this way. He, he discovered, John Wesley was a great revivalist. And um, he, he was the one that created the Methodist church. And uh, John Wesley said, it seems as if God can't do anything unless somebody prays first. So why? God works with man because we have authority down here on earth. God created us in Genesis. It talks about that God gave us authority. He gave us dominion. Amen. Somebody say, I have some authority. And the reason why you have authority, because you're, you're born here on this earth, and you're an earthling, amen? So you have some authority on the earth, amen? amen. And, and it it's all starts with Genesis. So, so we have some authority. So God, it's never God alone, and it's never man alone. It's always God working with man, okay? You know, some people will, will, will try to, you know, preach a message. I love grace, but sometimes grace can be preached in such a way that it's all God. You know, you don't have to really do anything. God's controlling everything. It, God's behind everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And that's a grace message to the extreme, right? And then you have people that walk in faith. And, and the people that walk in faith, a lot of times, if it's to the extreme, you know, if it's, if it's going to get done, you got to do it. In other words, faith people tend to, tend to get more legalistic. Grace people tend to get more lazy. Amen. And so we need to combine the two and have grace and faith. Amen. Faith in God's ability that as we believe God, God's going to make the promises come to pass. How many people realize out here it's not you who, who's going to make God's promises come to pass? No, it's God. We have faith in God's grace, his ability, his power to make things come to pass. And when we're trying to struggle in our own strength, trying to make something come to pass, that's when we get tired and we get burned out. Amen. Has anybody tried to make something come to pass in your own strength, in your own ability? Anybody ever try to change somebody, change a spouse, and instead of letting the Holy Spirit change the spouse? Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so we need to allow the Holy Spirit to come into our lives to change things. We need to do that. So we need to have faith, but faith accesses the grace of God. Amen? And God does the grace thing, but we do the faith thing. Amen? And so faith accesses it. And so we're talking here about um, prayer, and then this is a template for prayer. And in verse 9, it says, In this manner, therefore, praying, this is Jesus speaking, he says, our Father in heaven, and uh, I'm just going to recap and move into where we're going to focus on today. But um, when we approach God, if you are saved and you have a relationship with God through, the, through His Son, Jesus, the Bible says that we've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into God's marvelous light, that, that we are children of God. Amen? You know, a lot of times uh, you hear people say, well, everybody's children of God, but... In reality, you know, and I understand that saying, but, um, but really, in reality, there's two groups of people that live on this earth, the saved and the unsaved. And the Bible says that the saved person is really a child of God, and the unsaved person, I hate to tell you this this morning, is really the child of the devil. 
And that, Jesus actually said it this way. He said, and, and you can be religious, but he told the Pharisees, he says, you are of your father the devil. So he was telling the Pharisees, which were supposed, they were supposed to know God's word. They were the l religious people. Really, it was the religious people that gave Jesus all the problems. Amen. It wasn't the people out there, the prostitutes or the, or, or, or the publicans or that. It was the religious people. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? And so, and so we have to understand this, that, that God is our Heavenly Father and there are two families out here. So, so we don't have to just approach God as God Almighty and He is God Almighty, but He is our Heavenly Father too. And so we have to look at that and so when we approach God, we approach Him in that manner. And then it says, hallowed be your name. You know, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy, your name. And, you know, we want to honor and reverence God in our prayer time. And I really believe the more we put honor to God and the things of God and his word and the church, the more blessing we're going to walk in. The more we honor God's word. Amen. The more we put an honor and a precedence on God's word, the more God's blessings can work in our lives. You believe that today? The enemy is constantly trying to get us to dishonor God's word, trying to get us to, you know, the enemy is trying to always get us to question if God's word is true, get us to question if God is really, does he really mean the promises that he speaks in his word? He tries to get us to question, you ever question God's promises every once in a while, sometimes when you're believing and you're not seeing things happen, you, you know, the enemy wants to get that doubt on the inside of us. But we can't allow that doubt to stay. Amen? Amen. You know, the Bible says this, and James says this, a double-minded man will get nothing from God. Amen. In other words, you, you can't say, I believe God one moment, and then the next moment, I don't think God's coming through, you know, things aren't working. You can't be vacillating between, you know, a double-minded man means you're vacillating between, between two opinions. And we need to stand with God. The Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. In other words, God's, God's word is true regardless of what you're going through, regardless of what the doctor's report says, regardless of what's going on. God's word is more true than the circumstances that we're dealing with. You believe that today? Because, you know, my Bible says, your Bible says that the circumstances that we're de dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis is subject to change. So whatever you might be going through, you may be going through a hard time today or this month or even you may be having a tough year this year. I'm going to say this to you today. It's subject to change. Do you believe that today? As long as we start connecting with God through faith and grace, our faith accesses God's grace to change the circumstances and the situations in our life. You know, the Bible says don't cast away your confidence for we have need of Patience. And what, and what the enemy wants us to do is run out of patience. Amen. And when you're running out of patience, you're running out of love. Because, lo because, because love is patient. Amen. The Bible says this through faith and patience. Yes. Pastor, did you have to hit on that this morning? <laughs> through faith and patience. Yes. We, it's not just by faith alone. By faith and patience, we inherit the promises of God. My mom prayed for us, you know, for, for the family. She was the only Christian in our family. And she prayed back in 76. And um, she uh, stood in agreement and covenant that, that her household was going to be saved. It took 10 years and all of us got saved all in one year. She, she, she prayed it in 76. And in 86, all of her children came into the kingdom of God. I got saved in church. My brother got saved that same year reading a gospel track. My other brother got saved watching an evangelist on TV. All happened that same year. It was all different. Isn't that amazing how God can move? And my sister rededicated her life. I'm not, I, I, I didn't interview her, and, but she rededicated her life and gave her life back to the Lord. And so isn't that awesome? God can move even though it may not look like he's moving. He is on the move. You just need to believe it. When Daniel prayed, it took 21 days for the angel. In the Old Testament, it took 21 days for him to receive an answer. But the angel said to Daniel, God heard you the first day that you prayed and dispatched the angel the first day. Some of, some of us think, well, God is slow. No, the Bible says God's not slack concerning his promises. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? He's not slack. Amen. I'm telling you, I'm so excited this morning. Amen. So we want to we want to honor God. We honor his word by by believing his word and we honor God by obeying his word. Amen. The Bible says this. It's the willing and obedient that eat the best of the land. Some of you might say might be saying this today this morning. Well, I'm not eating the best of the land. Well, there's you know, there's ingredients to bake a cake and there's ingredients to eat the best of the land. And the ingredients is willingness with is a heart attitude towards the things of God that you're not begrudging. You're not having a, a bad attitude and serving God. And then obedience is following through and doing what God wants you to do. Amen. And when you start working these two, because the enemy is constantly working on our attitude. So we got to stay happy in the process. Even when we're in the wilderness, we need to stay happy. That's what happened with the children of Israel is because they kept looking at the circumstances, kept griping and complaining. And, you know, that first generation died in the wilderness. They got what they said. They said, God's going to kill us in this wilderness. And it wasn't it wasn't God that killed them. It was their words that killed them. Amen. Their own stout words that were against God. Amen. So we look at this. And so we want we want to hallow uh, God's name and we want to give God, you know, reverence. Like I said before, there's angels flying around God's throne room saying, holy, 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 Lord God almighty, who was and is and is to come. And, you know, he has angels doing that 24 seven. Of course, there's no time in heaven, but he has people. He has those angels moving. Praise God. And so here, um, then we, we pray that uh, God's kingdom will come really in his fullness. You know, a lot of people believe that Jesus is coming back in September. You know, some people are saying, oh, it's bad out here. We got the blood moons. You know, Jesus could come back. He could come back tonight, I believe. Amen. I mean, we're getting closer to the return of Jesus than ever before. Some people are making plans for Jesus to come back in September. Amen. And, uh, you know, that's going to be great. I mean, I, I, I'm ready. How many people are ready? Amen. And, uh, you know, because I'm ready for my glorified body. I'm willing to I'm ready to eat whatever I want without getting fat. I'm you know, I mean, are you hearing what I say? You know, in the Bible, it says that we, we're going to be eating. Amen. There's going to be a banquet table up in heaven. Jesus ate with his glorified body. We're going to enjoy life. Amen. And so it says here, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth As it is in heaven. You know, when we're talking about God's kingdom, you have to look at God's promises always aligns with with the with with the heavenly kingdom. And so really, his promises are always in direct correlation with heaven. Let me ask you a question. Do you think there's any sick people in heaven? No. So that, so he doesn't want sick people down here. That's why Jesus went around healing and delivering people and set people free from sickness. Amen. And do you think there's any people in poverty in heaven? No. You think anybody's broke and living in a double wall? No, I'm not going to go there. But are you are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? No. God wants his kingdom down here. So that's why he has the promises for us to stand on to activate the blessings of God down here. Amen. We're called to activate the blessings and the promises of God down here as it is in heaven. Let it be down here on earth. Do you believe that today? And so we start standing on some Bible promises and start, and start quoting what God quotes. What? You, you mean quote God's promises? Yeah. And, and the Bible says, how can two walk together unless they're in agreement? So we got to get in agreement with God's word. If God's word says, by Jesus stripes you're healed, but you keep saying, I'm sick, pastor. What does the word say? No, by Jesus stripes you're healed. That sickness is a temporary situation sub- subject to change. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? But pastor, I'm broke. That is a temporary situation subject to change. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? Those just unlocking the promises of God, bringing heaven down here on earth by faith and God's grace unlocks the blessings. You believe that today? Amen. So it says here on earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. And also, I just want to say this. You know, you need to be praying, you know, uh, the Ephesian prayers 
And, and so God can reveal his calling in your life. Get a greater revelation of, of who you are in God and what God has for you. So, so uh, you know, I minister that and we have those prayers on the table when you walk in. So start praying those prayers over yourself and over your family members that are saved for spiritual growth. Amen. Because God wants us growing. Do you believe that today? And it says here, uh, uh, give us this day our daily bread. I, I like to ask God to just reveal to me greater revelation of who I am in, in, in him and who he is to me. And so I just ask God just to give me a deeper revelation of God. Yeah. Amen. We, we all need to go deeper in God. Amen. We all need to get a greater revelation of God's love. Amen. Yeah. We all need to get a greater revelation of who God is. He is slow to anger, abounding in loving kindness and mercy. His tender mercies are over all his works. You know, you're a work of God and his tender mercies are over you. Isn't that good news this morning? And so we see this. And so it says here, give us this day our daily bread. Now, this is what I want to focus on and hone on, hone in this morning. Uh, Forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. Or forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And this is really important here. We need to, you know, if you want to be close to God, you need to be a person that's always quick to repent and quick to, re- to forgive. If you're a person that's quick to repent, what do I mean by repenting? I, I mean when the Holy Spirit reveals an area in your life that you need a change, that you've been walking in some type of darkness and the light of God's word has just shown that up. You just realize you may have been doing something that's been contrary to God's word. Then what we need to do is say, OK, God, I see it now. You don't like me, you know, acting this way. You don't like me responding. You don't like me sh- you know, shooting off my mouth or being in anger and doing this. And, and I understand that you want me walking in the love, in love. So, so we need to change. We need to ask God to forgive us and, and, and ask him to give us his power, his grace power to work in our life so we can overcome some weaknesses. Amen. Amen. You know, in, in 1 John 1, 9, it talks about confess your sins. You know, it, it says that if, if, if you confess your sins to the Father, He is justified to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And so we have uh, Jesus. He's praying for us. But, you know, you know, the Bible says this in Hebrews that we can come boldly to the throne of grace to find help in time of need. And so how can we come boldly if we just sin? Because the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus washes and cleanses away our sin. You know, that is, that is the key. We need to have um, uh, some, every once in a while, we need to have some remorse about our sins. Amen? In other words, we, we should understand that when we uh, miss it or when we sin, we really hurt the, the heart of the Father. We don't think we do, but God can hurt. The Bible says that when we miss it, uh, it says in Ephesians, that we can actually grieve the Holy Spirit. A lot of times, we gr- grieve means that you hurt the Holy Spirit. It means you hurt God. We can actually hurt God. I heard one person say this, to the capacity God can love, it's the capacity that God can hurt. Wow. That's a pretty strong statement, isn't it? So to the capacity that God can love us is the capacity that he he can be hurt when when people do wrong. Amen? God loves the sinner, but he hates the sin because sin destroys people's lives. And so we need to be people uh, that's quick to to repent. Amen? Let's look at uh, a psalm here. Let's look at Psalms, uh, I believe it's 51 that I want to go to. You may have read this before. But David, you know, it's interesting when you study out the Old Testament and you study out some of the kings. And, you know, I, I've, I've studied and I've looked at some of the kings in the Old Testament. Uh, and the first king was King Saul. And, you know, King Saul lost the anointing and lost his position as a king. Um, and, um, and God judged him for a couple areas. King Saul didn't obey God. in in, in an area where he was supposed to obey God. And then King Saul also acted as a priest and and he got out of his calling. He didn't wait for Samuel to come in. And he did some things that were wrong 
And, um, and God said, that was it, you're, king, you're done. He just didn't obey God. He lost the anointing and he lost the grace in his kingdom. And, but David, you know, when you look at David, David was a man, the Bible says, was after his, God's own heart. But David uh, had an adulterous relationship with Bathsheba. Amen. And uh, not only that, he got her pregnant. Not only that, you know, she was married. And, 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 uh, and the guy that she was married to was in David's army and was one of his, you know, captains in the army. And, and David ended up, you know, trying to get him to really come back off the field to sleep with his wife to cover up his sin. And he wouldn't do it. He would sleep on the ground, you know. And then David tried to get him drunk. He said, you, why don't you go back to your house, you know, because David was trying to cover his sin. You listen, the Bible says when you, try, when you try to cover your sin, you will not prosper. But he who forsakes and confesses their sins will be blessed. And a lot of people want to just cover over. They don't want to act like, I ain't doing anything wrong. You know, they just they don't, want to, they don't want to act like they've done anything wrong. But listen, when you confess, you know, confession, I heard, is good for the soul. It's good to confess our weaknesses. Nobody's perfect. We're all navigating this faith life. We're all navigating it. And so David, you know, as you look at it, you almost look like David, okay, he committed adultery. He got, he, he got uh, Bathsheba pregnant. She was married. Then he went ahead and said, well, uh, uh, Uriah, which was, his, which was married to, to Bathsheba, you know, he wouldn't sleep with his wife. So he, he said, Uriah, here's, he, made, he, he put a letter, put a seal on it. Give this to the head guy over there, which was sealing his doom. <laughs> you know, he told, he told uh, his head guy to put uh, Uriah in the front lines so the enemy could kill him. And pull back. Amen. And so I would think when you look at David's sin compared to Saul's sin, Saul just acted like a priest and disobeyed God in an area. And you'd think that David's sin was more grievous than, than Saul's sin. You'd think, well, why, did that, why did David still maintain his kingship? And Saul, because Saul didn't have a repentive heart. Saul didn't, didn't care. Saul would, would go to Samuel, the, the prophet, and said, pray to your God. That God pray to your God? He actually said that. Pray to your God that God would forgive my sin. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? But David had a repentive heart. He was quick to repent. And when you look at Psalms 51, it, it talks about this. And this is, he wrote this after Nathan, the prophet, came to him. And David was trying to cover up his sin. It went about a year before, you know, God just blew the lid off the thing. And it sent Nathan the prophet to come in and said to David, David, there's a there's a, a guy in your kingdom that, uh, you know, he he's a wealthy guy and there's and there's a poor family. His family's wealthy. He has thousands of sheep. And this one poor family has one sheep and it's a pet. And this wealthy man took the poor sheep and uh, away from the poor man, the man took that sheep and slaughtered it and had dinner over it. And he had all these other sheep. And uh, he said, David, what should we do with that man? And David said, that man should die, <laughs> which was a little strong because really that was a little strong for what that guy did. And any time that we're walking in any kind of known sin, we're always going to be more critical on other people. Amen. We're always going to be shutting people. We're going to be looking at other people. Saying, they shouldn't be doing that. Why? It's, it's a way to cover up our own weaknesses. Yeah. You ain't got to be very careful if we're getting critical on other people. Because we could be covering up our own weaknesses. In other words, we need to be merciful people. We need to be people of mercy. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the meek. They will inherit the earth. You know, we need, we need to walk in these kind of attributes for our faith to work. See, faith won't work if there's an element of unforgiveness in our hearts. It will shut down the grace of God in our heart, in our lives. Because the Bible says faith worketh by love. And so if we have an element of bitterness or if we have offense in our in our life, we got to we got to be very careful with that. So here it says here that 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 David, um, he wrote the song. He says, have mercy upon me, O God, 
This is Psalms 51. According to your love and kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. You know, it's, we, we, we think it's always before God, but it's actually our sins a lot of times are before us. Are you hearing what? God says this, when we, when we, his word says this, when we pray and we ask God to forgive us, then he, he blots out our transgressions. He throws our sins as far as the east is from the west. God's not even going to bring it back up. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? And so this is, and this is an Old Testament prayer that David's praying. And he says here, and he starts talking about here, uh, uh, behold, in verse 5, but uh, let me go back to 3. For I acknowledge my transgressions, my sin is always before me. Against you, you only I have sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and the hidden part you will make me to know wisdom. See, God wants us to be honest with, with him. Yes. Amen. You know, you, sometimes we think God's not seeing what we do. We live in a fantasy world. You know, we, God sees everything. Everything is bare and open before God. And so he sees everything. So we, we need to be quick. You know, we don't want to be like Adam and, and, and Eve when, when, they were, when they sinned and, and, and partook of the for, forbidden fruit. You know, they heard the voice of the Lord and they ran. And that's what the enemy wants us to do, run and hide. But what we really need to do is run into the mercy of God. Hallelujah. Run into the loving arms of God. Amen. And so that's what we need to do. And that was David was doing. He says here, wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear the joy and gladness that the bones that you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. You know, the kingdom benefits is right standing with God through the blood of Jesus, but peace and joy. And so if we're, if we're walking in any sin and un, un, unrepentant sin and we're doing some wrong things, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take away that peace and that joy, the kingdom benefits that God has for us. And then we're, we're going to be miserable Christians. And I don't know about you, but I want the peace, I want the joy, I want the love of God on my life. I can't be effective unless I have the joy of my salvation. Amen. That's your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Some of us might be weak in here because there's areas in our life that we may need to adjust and get right with God so God can strengthen us. Amen. And so we see that in here. You know, so we we need to, you know, we can't offend God. Amen. The Bible also says that we can offend others and we can offend others. And the Bible says if if it says in Matthew, if you know that there's somebody has something against you before you come to the altar and bring your gift, before you do that, go to them and get it right. That's if your brother has something against you, not that you have something against your brother. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It actually says, it was like, like, well, I know that guy, does, you know, and, you know, I know I ticked that guy off last week, my coworker. And, but I don't really care about that guy. He's, he's a knucklehead, you know. And uh, you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> and it doesn't bother me. Now, I'm glad, man. I'm glad I ticked him off. But, you know, but if somebody, you know, if, if, if you could say, well, he's not a brother. He's, 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 he's a sinner. But, you know, we're not supposed to be taking off anybody. Amen. You can always find a way out. You can always try. You can always find something in this Bible to, to back up your lifestyle. You can just pull it out of context and say, see, I'm okay. You know, see, I'm okay. You can hang yourself with the word. Amen. And a lot of people are hanging themselves by pulling out the scriptures just to validate their losing lifestyle. Okay, man, I'm stepping on some toes today. Amen. And, uh, but God will heal them. But praise the Lord. Amen. And so we're talking about here that we can be the, instead of uh, offending God, we can actually offend others. And so what we want to do is we want to make sure that we go to our brother and sister if we feel like that there's a breach there and try to reconcile. 
It doesn't mean that they will, you know, release the debt and they could still harbor bitterness or, or ill will, but you're releasing it from your, yourself. You're not holding, you're, 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 not, you're not the one that's causing the problem. You know, you're doing everything you can to, to, for that brother to release it. You know, f uh, go to them. Maybe you shouldn't, uh, maybe you don't feel like you should apologize, but apologize anyway. Man, maybe I, I feel like I don't know what's going on with our relationship. Did I do something? I want to apologize. Did I do something? You know, go to them. Apologize. Don't try to cover up your sin. Oh, no, I never done that. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? Apologize. Be, be, be the bigger person. Take the higher road. What's the high road? The high road of love. Be the peacemaker. Be the peacemaker. Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the meek. Blessed. Amen. Empowered. You know, ble the word blessed means empowered to prosper. And I don't know about you, but I want to prosper in this life. I want to be prosperous. And so we want to, you know, forgive us of our sins as we forgive others who sin against us. So that is connected. You know, our walking in for the forgiveness of sins that God's forgiving us is connected to us forgiving others. Now it's about us being offended. Have you ever been offended? You see, offense unchecked will turn into unforgiveness. So offense unchecked, you keep an unchecked offense, that means somebody, in other words, somebody hurt you. You were hurt. You know, David wrote, you know, it, 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 he wrote in the Psalms, he said it wasn't, you know, somebody that was a stranger or an enemy that hurt me. It was my close friend that I walked in the house of God with. It's the closest people that you've been with. It's maybe the close people, people that you have a closer intimate relationship with that you have placed some trust in and then they lied to you and you trusted them and they put a knife in your back. Those people are hard to forgive. Does anybody know what I'm talking about today? You put your trust your confidence, you, you, you did, and then you find out they did the down and dirty to you. And you got the knife in your back. And then they don't want to admit to it, and they keep twisting that knife. I didn't do anything wrong, you know. You ever have people like that? I remember somebody did me wrong, and, uh, and they were a second year student uh, in Bible school. I was going first year, and they kind of, you know, they, they, they just talked me into giving them some money, and they used me. They befriended me to get some money out of me. And, you know, after you've done something, you realize, like, did I do something that's, something's not right? After you do it, like the Holy Spirit said, you knucklehead, you know, you, you just did something. And I realized a guy befriended me just so I could give him money. And so I approached him. I said, listen, man, I really believe that you had the whole wrong motive to be a friend to me. You wanted to get, to get some of my money. And he said, well, you know, I'm sorry you feel that way, but you're a Christian. I'm a Christian. You've got to forgive me. You know what the Bible says. Where's the retribution? Well, he should be. Oh, I'm sorry you feel it. Let me give you your money back. He didn't even offer it back. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? And so I had to forgive this brother. You know, it took three years, but I had to forgive him. <laughs> Every time I thought about that guy, that scoundrel, he ain't going to ever make it in ministry, you know. And uh, are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? But I remember I was at a meeting and I kept bumping into this guy. I mean, 2,000 people in this meeting. And I keep w w running into the one guy that offended me three years ago. And I finally had to get it right and say, hey, brother. And I found out he went through all kind of tragedy in his life, went through a heart attack and all this. And I said, well, man, you, you reap what you sow, didn't you, brother? You know, <laughs> sorry to hear that, you know. So, you know, people will reap what they sow. Amen. You know, eventually if they sow, you know, evil, they will reap evil. It will come back. OK, so don't you don't need to worry about fighting your own battles. God will fight your battles and there's spiritual laws already set in place that will take care of those guys. Are you hear what I'm saying? God will fight your battles. That's why when Jesus was up on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. It's the power of forgiveness. Jesus wasn't holding those people against him. 
Amen. He wasn't holding. He, he was interceding for those. If you want to get rid of some unforgiveness out of your life, maybe some, an unchecked offense has attached to you and now it's, now it's unforgiveness. If you keep that going, it's going to be a root of bitterness. And it's going to cause a lot of defilement. And so we don't want it to go into that, that root of bitterness, which will dry up the bones. Amen. Amen. It will hurt you physically. Amen. And so what we want to do is if you want to get rid of, maybe you're dealing with some hurt in your life. You know, what Jesus said is pray for those who despitefully use you. Amen. Pray for those who despitefully use you, use you and persecute you. Do good to those. Do good. What? Feed those that are doing you wrong. Feed them. Take them to lunch. If somebody slaps you, turn the other cheek. What? Are you serious, Jesus? If somebody wants your coat, give them your tunic too. What? Well, you know, that, you know God will take care of you. In other words, you take the higher road of love, God will take care of you. It's just, I, I give you this illustration. I gave it before, but it's worth repeating. Uh, this, la this older lady was in an apartment by herself, and this guy came in to rob her. You know, I believe it was under gunpoint. And I uh, said, you know, and I'm going uh, to take all that you got. And she was a Christian. She said, well, you don't, you know, you don't have to steal anything. I'll give it to you. So, so you won't be breaking the law. Wow, that kind of like made him like. <laughs> and matter of fact, before you take everything, because I'm giving it to you anyway, you're not going to be breaking all. Let me fix you breakfast. Wow. <laughs> by, the, by, by the time she was done making him breakfast, he was choking on it. She led him to the Lord. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where, you know, we're trying to protect our stuff. You get killed trying to protect your stuff. <laughs> Are you so, I'm going to protect my stuff. It's just stuff. Souls are worth more than stuff. You hear what I'm saying? I'm going to protect my stuff. Souls are more, worth more than stuff. God can replace stuff. Man, are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? Glory to God. God can replace all that stuff. Matter of fact, you may just... Just turn that guy around and he may be a Jesus follower. Amen. So we need to learn to, to, to walk in the love of God. You know, uh, there's another offense. I'm trying to close this down. And we can be offended with God. Oh, man, what? Yeah, we can get offended with God. You know, some things aren't happening. We're not, our prayers aren't, aren't being manifested like, they, 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 like we think they should be. We've been serving God faithfully. We've been doing all the right things up until a point, and, and all the wrong things are happening. Have you ever been there? Amen. And you're like, God, I've, I, I've done some stuff, you know. <laughs> I've been serving you. And all the wrong things are happening. I was better off when I was a sinner. I should go back in the world. Makes you want to, sometimes when you're under, you know, sometimes, man, it was easier when I served the devil. Well, in a degree, it might have been easier because you were in his camp. The devil didn't even do anything. When you're in God's camp and you're following God, the devil wants to thump you every once in a while. He wants to slap you around every once in a while. He wants to try to push you down, push your faith down. The devil is, is constantly strategizing on how to kill us. Amen. If some bad things are happening, you might as well start doing what Jesus said. Start praising the Lord. Amen. Count it all joy. It shows that, you know, you know, I mean, some Christians aren't worth for the devil to attack. Oh, man, did I go there? They're not doing anything in the kingdom, so they don't, have to get, they don't get attacked at all. <laughs> they're not tithing. They're not... They're not giving to the Lord. They're not being fruitful. So definitely, I don't need to mess with them. They're, they're half my buddy, you know. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying today? But if you're being attacked, maybe you're doing something right. Amen. On the other side, you could be doing something wrong and you could be reaping what you sow. Don't be, don't be, you know, there's, there's two things, that, two sides of every story. So you got to check them. Have you been doing anything wrong? Have you been talking negative? Have you been speaking the wrong things? So we need to really look at that. Uh, you know, we can get offended with God. David got offended with God. What? David did? Yeah, and I talked about this story a couple weeks back. But David, 
uh, wanted to take the Ark of the Covenant back into the, his city, the city of David. And so he, he took the ark, he put it on a cart, which was the wrong thing to do. He was, it was supposed to be on the, uh, the sol- shoulders of the priest, the Leviticus priesthood. But he put it on a brand new cart thinking that would be okay. And so he took that, you know, as they were rolling in, and he was worshiping God. Uh, Uzzah, you know, they hit a bump and Uzzah steadied the, car, the uh, ark and he died right there. And the Bible said David got angry. He got angry because God smote it, you know, Uzzah, dropped dead. And he said, okay, we're, we're not, you know, and, and he got fearful too. We're not taking an ark to my city. We're just not going to do it. You know what I'm saying? Let's just take it to the closest place that we can. So they dropped it off at somebody's house and they, he just went back to his city and said, forget about it. Yeah, I tried serving God. I tried taking the ark. I thought that was going to make God happy. Something wrong went, something went bad. God must not have been happy with what I was trying to do. Then forget about it. And the ark represents God's presence. And so the ark is, represents God's presence. And when we get angry with God, we'll lose God's presence. Mm. Are, you, are you listening to what I'm talking about? We can lose God's presence. And what woke David up, because it was, it was three months, the ark that was, that was parked at somebody's house, he got word that God was blessing that household. That all these blessings were coming. He said, what? Blessings? Blessings? I like to be blessed. You know, David, King David likes to be blessed. Who doesn't like to be blessed in here? And the days of, man, he's getting blessed. We got to get that ark back to the city of David. God, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be angry with you. And then as he started searching because he thought that God was probably unjust. Have you ever felt like God was unjust in some areas? And that you were measuring your justice with God's justice or your righteousness with God's righteousness. God's always right. And if there's a problem, we're wrong and God's right. Amen. We can't measure our righteousness by God's righteousness. And so I think David was saying, that wasn't right. We were doing the right things. And it was a new cart. But when David looked into the manual, you know, you got to follow the manual, right? Why did my car locked up and seized up? Is God, I've been tithing. Because you didn't put oil in it, dummy. You need to put oil in it. It's not the devil. The Holy Spirit's been trying to get you to put oil in it for the past three months. So David said, why did God smote him? Well, he started looking at the mirror. You're supposed to carry that. That ark was supposed to be on the priest's shoulders, you know. And there's a certain way. The Levitical priest it was a certain way that you're supposed to do things. God had, has a certain way that he wants things done. And in the Old Testament, it was very strict. You did it God's way or the highway. We got a little bit of grace here. And so, and so he figured it out. Oh, maybe I missed it. Sometimes we can miss it. You know, I'm, I'm trying to close down here. i got to close, man. I've been always going long. But, you know, Judas, uh, you, you heard about the story where this lady came in. Jesus had his disciples um, around him. And this lady came in that I believe she was a prostitute. And she had this very costly bottle of perfume. It's called the alabaster box. And she broke that over Jesus. And it was worth about a year's worth of, 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 of income. And the Bible says that Jesus' disciples got a little indignant about it and got upset about it. And Jesus said, leave her alone. You know, and he rebuked his disciples. And he said, she, gave, she put this, oil, uh, this fragrance on me to prepare me for my burial. And, and, and from this point on, this story would be told all over the world. And it is in, in the scriptures. Jesus was awesome, is awesome. And, but you know what was interesting? I really believe Judas was the one that really got offended over it. Because the next thing you read, Judas, Judas went immediately to go betray Jesus, to go talk to them. And I believe that Judas got offended because he was still in the money. And he, and he saw, well, and, he, and somebody that's crooked sees other people as being crooked. If you live a crooked life, you'll start seeing other people as being crooked, even though they could be straight and honest. Because you, if you're a liar, you're going to think other people are liars. If you're a thief, you're going to start looking at other people as thieves. Amen. If you're a manipulator, you're going to start looking at other people as a manipulator. If you're walking in purity and holiness, you, you, you're going to have a right outlook for other people. You think, oh, you, you're not going to be judgmental. Amen. Amen. And so you, you tend to see people as you are. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? And so and so and so we see this that, that we need to be, be very careful that we're not being judgmental, critical on people, that, that we're that we're not harboring offense. So as soon as you know Judas, you know, got so upset, he said, Jesus is just like me. He's just trying to take it for himself. He took that, he took that perfume. And he's taken it out of my pocket now, because he was a thief. And so he went and betrayed Jesus over it. And so we need to understand this, that an unchecked offense will turn into unforgiveness, which can turn into betrayal. You end up betraying people. Amen. And we don't want to be betraying people. Amen. And so we need to be very careful. And, and my last point, and i got to close this down. My last point is that you can be, have unchecked unforgiveness towards yourself. And you need to forgive yourself. You know, God has forgiven you. Don't hold yourself in check. The Paul says this, the Apostle Paul says, forgetting those things that are behind and looking forward to those things that are in front of me. I, I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling. I, I'm paraphrasing it. And Paul said, forgetting those things behind. In other words, Paul had to forget the fact that he, that he, was, he stood at Stephen's uh, death, you know, the first martyr, and, and they threw people in jail. He had to forget about that past. If he didn't forget about it, he would have never been the apostle that God called him to be. And we, some of us might need to let go of some things that we may have done in the past. Because, and we've already asked forgiveness. God has already forgiven you. You need to forgive yourselves. You need to release that offense so the grace of God can work in your lives. Did you receive it this morning? Let us bow our heads in prayer. Father, I just thank you for your mercy, for your goodness today. I thank you, Father, for drawing us by your spirit. I thank you, Father, for blessing every person. Perhaps you're here today. Maybe you know you need to forgive somebody. You need to release somebody. That's, that's actually hurting your faith from obtaining the promises. Maybe you need to forgive yourself. Maybe you need to go to somebody and make it right. Well, I, I just ask, Father, that you'd move on of the people today. And today, just, just confess in your heart. Release that. that uh, just say this, Heavenly Father... I'm making a decision today to forgive all those that has ever offended me. Father, I know that you're always right. And Father, if I've been harboring any bitterness or ill will towards you, forgive me today. And Father, I forgive myself for missing it in the past. Thank you for restoring to me the joy of my salvation. In Jesus' name, amen.